entering mix exclusive. Hello all, it's JMix here with TupacNation.net and I'd like to welcome all my YouTube subs and viewers to my latest interview with Chu the Specialist. Some of you may know Chu from his work on Tupac songs such as Hold On Be Strong and some of you may know Chu from his production with the Wu-Tang Clan. For all the YouTube subs and viewers out there listening, if you're a producer or an aspiring artist you need to hit up Chu Branch right away for CD mastering. And to all the beat makers out there, be sure to check out the Producers Beat Auction, where artists and producers meet up to auction off tracks and the network. So without any further ado, here's a full length part one with hip hop producer Chu the Specialist. Chu, at what age did you discover that you had a musical talent? Nah, to be honest, <laughs> probably like four or five years old, honestly, because I started out doing a lot of dancing, you know, I was kind of shy, but I was doing a little, little dancing here and there for my grandmother and my mother when they had company over playing cards and gambling. I was like their little entertainment. So I was kind of dancing, messing around on my grandmother's piano, I was playing on my dad's drum set, you know, as a kid, you know, so I kind of knew coming up as a youngster, you know, coming out of, like, you know, preschool, you know, I, you know, I had some type of talent for music, you know, so it kind of stuck with me since then as a kid, a young kid. What was your first step towards production? Uh, yeah, it came about really starting out, like, I was DJing, um, you know, coming up in middle school and high school. Um, I was a high school DJ, so after the football games, I started DJing. And that kind of like transpired to me wanting to make beats. Uh, sampling that just came out, you know, Radio Shack released a Casio board that you can sample up to probably three seconds or five seconds. So I started like, you know, messing around on the Casio. Um, that was like, I'm talking about like 15, 16 years old. Um, so I, you know, I just started developing my skills, you know, doing beats. And then, you know, the first, the first big project was Tupac, you know, when I hit, like, you know, my 20s, early 20s. Uh, so that's kind of how it all started, you know, really from DJing, playing records, making people dance, you know, messing around with break beats, picking up records, digging in the crate. And that kind of got my interest into producing music. I wanted to be a music producer. So it kind of started from the DJing process. So um, that helps a whole lot because, you know, you learn how to mix and pick up records, find cue points. You know, you know, really like tweak all your rhythm and coordination as far as drum programming. So that's why they all started in DJ at an early age. Can you tell us a little bit about meeting Tupac and how the song Hold On, Be Strong came to be? Yeah, um, that whole experience was awesome. Um, you know, a great time in history, man. Like when hip-hop was doing so good, you know, as far as a lot of rap groups like going up real big and, you know, they got to the movies and Tupac was filming Juice. Uh, when he was doing Juice, he released, released his first album called Tupacalypse. He was touring in Richmond, Virginia. He had a show there in Richmond, and actually, uh, me and my cousin, we was actually closing up uh, a restaurant that my cousin owned, and we was closing up one night, and we look up the street, come out the window, and see a group of guys walking towards a restaurant. Um, you know, it was a bunch of uh, like an entourage, it was Tupac's entourage. But, you know, Tupac wasn't really that known yet. He was known, but not known. So I noticed him uh, from looking out the window. I was like, hey, that's the, that's the guy from the movie Juice. That's Tupac. It was called Tupac then. <laughs> and, uh, or Bishop. I was like, oh, is that Bishop? You know, I, I said, oh, man, we got to open the doors. You know, tell him come on in and have a drink. So him and Thug Life came in, and this the early, the early Tupac days. I'm talking about, like, one album, one movie, you know. But, you know, we knew that kid was the, like, you know, at that time, like a kid, but we knew Pop was going to blow up and be real big. He had that charisma. So we let him in the restaurant, had some drinks, you know, cook him some food, and we built our relationship from the restaurant. You know, it was like everything happened in the restaurant, exchanging numbers. I was telling him, you know, I'm a DJ, uh, but I, I want to start producing. And Pop was like, okay, he hit up my number, let's say, let's hang out for the weekend because we got a show in Richmond uh, the next day. So we ended up 
we ended up hanging out all night. We ended up closing the restaurant. He hopped in the whip. I'm driving in the back seat, cracking jokes. Uh, he was a guy to crack a lot of jokes, man. And uh, we joked like all night, you know. Uh, we end up taking him to the club where he was to perform at the night before. And a lot of women, well, a lot of people recognized him. They knew he was like a big time celebrity. And they were stopping the car, you know, running up to the car and everything. And, um, and Tupac didn't have no bodyguards tonight. It was just, you know, him and his cousins, his friends, his entourage, you know, his, all his homies. So we ended up, um, you know, going inside the club, man, dancing on the good time. Tupac bought everybody drinks. He showed everybody love. He was just a humble guy. And, uh, you know, these, you know, and this was the early days. So he was getting a lot of love at that time just from one movie and, and one album, one you know, hot album. So, um, so that relationship started from there. We just hung out, man. You know, we stayed in touch. Gave his uh, personal number, you know, I could call him, you know, and he said, you know, be torn, to check up on him, see where he at. And he always promised to me, you know, I'm going to put you on, you know, put you down with Thug, like, I'm going to put you, you know, you know, break it, your, you know, a little keyboard, upgrade your equipment, send me some beats. So I just really, really just bump it down, start making beats like every day, man. Like every day I was making a lot of beats, just a Tupac on cassette tape. We didn't have CDs back then was doing anything on cassette tape. And I would just send beats to him, also Interscope, uh, you know, and his manager. And I would just always send beat tapes. It was called a beat tapes <laughs> back then. So, uh, one day I got a call from Interscope saying Tupac wanted to fly me to L.A. to produce two songs he wanted. He wanted you know, he wanted to, like, uh, record two of my records, which was, like, major for me. And I was, you know, like a young kid. You know, I just had one keyboard. I didn't have a big studio or nothing. It was just me and my keyboard. You know, it was a, a Exonic, a, a EPS. Or, well, probably was an ASR 10. I think it was an ASR 10 back then. I, I mastered that, you know, that board, and um, just uh, did a lot of beats just for Tupac. I focused on Tupac. That was it. That was my only focus, like making beats like him and getting on. Um, so the two songs that he ended up buying out in L.A., you know, we tracked them in L.A. Um, Shock G was one of the engineers. Uh, so a couple of other good guys, you know, uh, we ended up, you know, recording, Hold On, Be Strong. It was another record that we recorded. It never came out. Um, so after that, Tupac flew me back to Virginia. And just another day, you know, it was like a project, you know, accomplished, but not knowing Tupac was going to be as big as we were, you know. Um, but it just felt good. You know, I got my first big placement just from working hard and sending beats every day. You know, I was just sending beats, sending beats. And he picked up two of them. So that's kind of how it all started from the moment we met in the restaurant, exchanging numbers, you know, building that relationship is very important to a lot of cats trying to get on. Uh, because if I would have went the other route, like, you know, straight to the a and R, I I would have never had a place in it, you know, because uh, of the politics, you know. So if you can meet an artist face-to-face, build, like, like a good relationship, exchange numbers, become a friend, and that'd be a groupie, you know, you got a good chance of getting on. So that was kind of my thing. I, w- I wasn't a groupie. I was a, I knew I had talent and pop scene and, and I was just a humble cat. Um, but I created the buzz in my, in my, my town, you know, Richmond, Virginia. Um, and that's how kind of, you know, it's like that. that's how everything transpired, you know, just when, you know, meeting them at the restaurant to get in the placement. Then, you know, other projects start coming from other camps like Wu-Tang and others. So, yeah, it was, it was a great experience, man. A lot of people wish they could have worked with Pop. A lot of big time people, you know, that's all they have never had a chance to meet Pop or work with him. And I can't say that, you know, I got history with him, you know. So that's how I kind of all started. Chu, you don't remember the title to that other track, do you? We actually didn't have a name for the other one. I know we tracked it out. Um, that experience was really, really crazy because. When I laid my songs, uh, Tupac flew some other producers in. They laid out tracks. Tupac stayed in the studio and recorded probably all of them. I remember going to sleep. And I remember waking up and Tupac was still recording, man. It was like 6 in the morning. He was still recording the songs. So I think the way Pop worked, from what I witnessed, he recorded a bunch of songs. And they may have t- titles and they may not they may change them, but he recorded a lot of songs, man. I never seen nobody work like Pop. Never. I never experienced an artist 
they can do a lot of songs like that and knock them out. You know, he was real gifted, you know. And he was, like, real determined, um, the hard worker, you know, to be the best. So we never really sat down and said, hey, Paul, we're going to call this song such and such. This will be such and such, you know. Um, he'll come up to me and say, hey, Chew, I got a song in a school when we do a radio song. I know, and I'm going to get that to you. And we're we'll called to hold on be strong. That was the only one that we really named that he named that had the title, you know. But the second track, no, I don't. I have no idea, man. I wish or I hope that one day it'll surface up, um, you know, or I can hear it or remix it or Interscope put it out. So good chance they probably will. He did a lot of songs. You just never know. No, I haven't even heard it since. I don't, you know, the only time we uh we worked on it when I was out there with him. And after that, you know, he got locked up, and I started, you know, working with Wu-Tang. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that Pac did. A lot of people may not hear it or they may hear it. I'm not sure how they release any records, but it was a hot track. Actually, that song was better than the one he chose, Hold On Be Strong. I kind of wish it could have been flip-flop, you know, because that second one was real hot. It was a hot beat. Um, I don't have no idea what the, what the song is. I know I had a sample in it. And I know we had a little sample clearance issues with Hold On Be Strong. So maybe because of sample clearance, that's why uh, that song was never released or finished. Because it's just the politics behind it. Once again, it's J-Mix here. And I want to thank all my YouTube subs and viewers. Be sure to keep it locked right here. I got more with you coming up. And be sure to check out the Producers Beat Auction. And if you need mastering done, just hit up the man Chew right here, and I'll see everybody on the next upload. One love, everybody. DJ Mix exclusive. What up, shut up?